just got done with the 700 mile trip on this thing and uh, in my opinion this is one of the best dual sports out there I mean I've never ridden a KTM or a DRZ 400 or 650 whatever but man I, I have a hard time thinking they can beat this thing just as far as all around durability and capability goes but I don't know Maybe if I got on a KTM, I'd, I'd never look back. <laughs> Um, I have a few pet peeves about it. Small tank is one of them. The uh, gap between first and second gear, that's kind of big. But, you know, I've, I've learned to deal with that. I like having that low first gear, so I wouldn't want it any higher because I need to plonk along sometimes at a low rate of speed on rough stuff. And uh, I just keep it in first. Um, I've never had a dry sump engine before, so this is a first for me. and Kind of a pain in the ass, if you ask me. So this I've learned to, to check the oil two minutes after shutting it down at the end of the ride. Um, just let, let it sit for two minutes, let the oil partially settle, stand it up straight, and then check your oil. So it's just something I've learned. I've changed my technique. So now I check my oil at the end of every ride instead of the next morning. So, but other than that, uh, I can't think of many weak, weak points on this bike. The engine's, you know, in a mild state of tune. It's not designed to run at the ragged edge of performance. Uh, that's not what this thing is for. This thing is designed to get from point A to point B and just keep running. You know, as far as mods go, I haven't done Dave's mods or any of that stuff. I left the battery out there for a reason. I don't want it under the seat because uh, if I need to jump start it, I need to check my voltage, my fuses, change a CDI box, or whatever. I just pull this off and then I'm right there. So I don't have to untie all that stuff or take my seat off. I put on a bigger sprocket, the Fritzko sprocket. Um, I, I'm not sure why they had such a skinny little bastard on there. And I'm going to replace this hardened... Uh, shift lever with the stock uh, you'll see in the video where I bent the crap out of it it was really hard to bend back so I'm worried about it being so hard that it's gonna break that off that shaft so that's getting switched to stock um, shift lever as soon as it comes in I've already ordered it so yeah as far as mods go that's it Snippers. <laughs> Stick a little boonie. Got the bags a little earlier than I planned. About, I don't know, I got there like four or something, 420. Decided to take a little cruise up the Snake River Valley. Saw a road on Google Earth near Savory. Here, right, takes off right from Savory. And uh, it's pretty cool, man. Check it out. Kind of cool topography. Eventually, it goes to Rollins. It was getting pretty rocky, but I'd like to take it one of these days when I have three days to travel. Not just two. If you ain't out riding a dual sport in Colorado, then where the fuck you at?
yeah another great day of riding man can't beat it just stop to get a picture here it's so cool looking cows over there <laughs> this one we'll be riding through for the next hour or so to be the craig uh the road i'm on is just haul ass 50 miles an hour anyway so we're gonna make good time get to craig get something to eat and we'll head for meeker Here we are at Avery Reservoir. I thought I'd drive down the road, kind of backtrack a little bit. Check it out. Kind of pretty. A little windy to be out boating today. You can see not many people are out there. I saw a paddleboarder when I pulled up. But uh, yeah, just about to go up and over Ripple Pass and Dunk Dunkley Pass, whatever it's called. But uh, last time I did it, it was a gravel nightmare. Just really loose gravel. Kind of hard to ride, tiring. So it's about 50 miles from that. So thought I'd take a little quick break, get a drink before we start heading up there. Uh, it's been a great two days, man. I mean, this is, what can I say? This is just awesome. It's what I live for. Back to work until I can get another ride. <laughs> Just out here, just enjoying the view, kind of milking it a little bit. <laughs> kind of on the home stretch to getting back to home, so. More or less, I mean, it's all kind of familiar trail. So I'm just stopping, enjoying the hell out of it. Every second. This is just, I live for this shit. I love it. Been running into all kinds of those bigger adventure bikes, the KTM's, 1100, you know, whatever they are. I don't know, 690, 800, 1000s. The big BMWs out here too. Seeing them, but uh, I don't know, man. They can definitely take me on the highway a lot better. But I'll tell you what, when the going gets rough, man. Step out of the way, boy. That Honda's coming through. You know what I mean? Just, it's just more capable all the way around. It'll do highway, it'll do, you know, just normal roads, it'll do dirt roads, and it'll do gnarly ass shit, too. So, more versatility, I believe. More of a work machine, I guess you, I used to call it, like the TW. <laughs> you know, its biggest drawback is that small tank, 90 miles, that's all you get. That's why I carry that gallon, it gets me up to 140, which is, you know, for the most part, you're going to find a station within 140 miles. Sometimes you might have to deviate from your normal course, so that kind of sucks. Have to swing over somewhere, 
get gas, you know, burn another 10, 15 miles doing that. But I don't know, a lot of guys are on those bigger tanks. I should try it. I just always read about issues with them and fuel pitcock hitting the engine there or you're losing the wings on the side for cooling. This thing runs hot. I mean, it really does. Those are probably beneficial to this engine. So I hate to lose those. But I also hate trying to, I hate tying on a gas, damn gas can. <laughs> but I pretty much got it down to a science now. It's not coming off. Yeah, that's the question. Bigger tank or uh, just carry my gas can. But you know, if I had a bunch of camping gear on here, I don't know if I'd have room for that gas can. So that's where you're kind of leaning toward that bigger tank being a benefit. All right, man. <laughs> well, post crash update here. Bent the crap out of my shifter. I have no way of bending it back without risking breaking that uh, shifter shaft. So I'm going to see if I can ride it home like that. Got another 80 miles though. But the worst thing was uh, it didn't sound right when I started. It was all brap, brap. And uh, my car boot had popped off. See how I just have a half ass clamp or a uh, zip tie on there. I'm going to get rid of that and get a real clamp because that popped off. So I had to take everything off, unstrap my tools, just take everything off just to get that thing off or back into place. So yeah, wiped out pretty good right there in that corner, man. Just slid out. Bam! Went down quick. Got a little cocky, I guess. But uh, I knew that shifter was going to bend, but it bent way more up than I thought it would. Well, bad news. I can't get out of first gear. Seems to hit that cover right there. So I got to figure out something, some way to bend that back. I don't want to just pound on it. So I got to think of something here. I don't want to be stuck out here, man. It'd suck. All right, well, I'll let you know how it works, how I get it fixed. But I got to do something there. I think I got it. I was able to wedge it in my little... Uh, I welded up some supports for my frame. You can see right here and there. Probably, I don't know, I did it last winter. Probably overkill, but whatever. But anyway, I ended up welding a brace on the on these uh, foot pegs there. I was able to wedge this in there like that and bend it back into shape. So, now, I pretty much have a shifter back. It should shift. 
I'm gonna put that cover back on and make sure, but as long as I didn't screw something up internally, I'm good to go. I should be able to shift into second, third, and fourth now. I was stuck in first, so. Oh, dude, man, the thing about tools, always bring tools. Even when you think, ah, chances are good, I never use them. They're gonna need them. Something like this, it's a careless turn. Guess it had to happen at some point. It's bound to happen. You can see me struggle to pick this thing up too. I was picking it up on an uphill. So I had to like get it up and lean it and then slide the front end down so I could stand it up. Gas is pouring out. Super exciting. All right, I'm gonna see if this thing runs. Keep you posted. Happy to report, man. Shift's great. No damage done. It was just hitting that cover. So like I said, we pulled it off, stringed it out using this thing. And uh, that's gonna work. That's gonna get me home for sure. All right, it's back together, all packed up. Takes a while, man, strapping a bunch of stuff down like that. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just have to be a little more careful. Jeez, man. That was uh, pretty unexpected. Adventure's over, man. I have to plan another one. That was great. It ended up being like 700 miles in two days, so a lot of riding. GoPro died on the way back. I didn't get back to like 8, 8 o'clock last night. Got up, went to work today. Yay! So, yeah, I just got home, and uh, here it sits. Got to do a little quick maintenance to it. Do an oil change, clean my air filter, just give it a bath. Oil the chain again, just get it ready for the next ride, whenever that may be. Fall will be in the air here soon, so. But God dang, I, I live for that shit. What a ride. What a machine, man. It's just like the off-road anvil. You know, with the exception of the small gas tank, I'd say that's his biggest weakness right there for doing long-distance stuff. That gets about 90 miles to the tank, and then you got about 20 on that reserve, I figure. Um... But uh, I just like carrying a can. If I'm gonna, if I'm in any doubt at all, I'll just carry a gallon. Kind of sucks being way the hell up there, but uh, it's worth it. Gotta have gas, man. <laughs> Gotta get a new mirror. Uh, actually, those mirrors are made in Salida, uh, right here in Colorado. So I'm gonna send them an email. And they're called Ram. <laughs> Rammed it into the ground. All right. So here's the modifications I made. You can see where they bolt to my uh, passenger foot pegs there, but if you can see that all right through there or not, they kind of go up and they're bolted in two places. I made kind of like a Y to support the subframe there and then out there as well, down into one that goes to each foot peg. You can see probably that one a little better even. And uh, I don't know. Like I said, probably overkill, but I was going to buy those stock ones online, but they, I kept hearing they won't fit around this aftermarket exhaust, so. Um, my tire's rubbing on it just a hair, I think. I need to heat it up and bend it a little bit. You can see right there. So, not much, just barely. And, uh, yeah, figured I had to beef up that subframe. Kept hearing about it breaking, so I didn't want it to break on mine. That was my solution. Well, uh, time will tell if it works, right? What a great machine, man. So you probably saw in the video where I wrecked, broke my mirror. Um, and all it took to switch the good one over to where the broken was is loosening this clamp. Pops right off that ball, stick it over there, you're done. <laughs> That's it. 
These are really cool mirrors. They're made by the company DoubletakeMirror.com. They're in Salida, Colorado. And there's the mirror I need. 30 bucks. Pretty cool, man. Highly recommended. Great mirrors. Infinitely adjustable. Pretty tough. I mean, I smacked the ground pretty hard, so I wasn't surprised it broke. And, um, yeah, just thought I'd mention that to you guys. Great mirrors. All right, hose clamp installed. Uh, I'm probably going to order the factory one because it's thinner, but um, that's going to get me through this ride this weekend for sure. So that's done. This thing was dusty, man. i got to clean out this air filter. I mean, yeah, look at that. Put a little... Pull this out, wipe it out real good. Put a little grease on that foam there. Should have done that last time. But uh, yeah, dust definitely gets in there. Faux show. Sure. Gorgeous day. I just love it out here. The roads are great. This thing just cranks along 60 miles an hour. No problem. Good old Honda. I can't say enough good things about this bike. I love it. I mean, it's the only, it's the last dual sport I'm going to need. Seriously. It does everything I want. It's a little tall, but you know what? I'll take it. It's got a lot of suspension, just soaks up stuff. I mounted this uh, uh, skid plate on there, and man, it echoes a lot of that engine noise right back up into your head. So I might take that off and line it with something. I don't know. I don't know what. But, uh, it's definitely noticeable. <laughs> it just cranks that noise right back up into your eardrum. So anyway, just thought I'd point that out. If anybody's going to mount one of those skid plates on there, that aluminum. Great skid plate mounted in minutes. It was no big deal. So, all right, man. Well, I'm going to get saddled up and we'll hit the road. Anyhow, um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.